What's going on everybody? It's Nerd Guys here. It's time to talk about and review Philippines. Where do we go from here? TRC 17. Now, I'm uh, walking to a pizzeria down the, down the street here. It's about half a mile, so no better time than now to do a review because, yeah, it's been two months since my last album review, and this is the last Twisted Red Cross album to talk about, other than TRC 18, Philip Rescue Letter, Human Barricade for the Fourth Order. But in reference to the original 17 cassette tapes that started the revolution in the Philippines, started the underground movement, and made the history, paved the way for what is now the Philippine underground scene of the day, the albums that paved the way for Middle Finger Records, Mutilated Noise, uh, Aquarius, Tone Deaf, RMD, all of them, all the good classics, and today, you know, Still Ill, Delusion of Terror, all that good stuff. It's all because of TRC. Tama Tanchenko, Hal and Dave, you know, the old veterans. But anyway, so, uh, this album, obviously, I waited till last to review it because it's the last TRC album. You know, it's, it's, this album is the footnote. It's the end screen of the film. You know, the film starts with Rescue Ladder, New Barricade 1, TRC 01, which, fun little fact about that. I heard from Edwin Salon of Herald X, the editor and writer of Herald X, that you know how Third World Chaos New Move for Error was released on vinyl record by Tower Records back in 84, Diana Productions, whatever? Well, it's kind of cool to know that Tommy originally tried to get Rescue out of the Barricade released on record, released on vinyl, but apparently Tower said nah, and uh, so only New Move for Error came out on vinyl. But I bring that up because when I first, I, I've been listening to the Twisted Red Cross albums for a good two years now. I've been reviewing them for, since, uh, I think I released my first review, which was Giant Idiot's Fascinating World of Garbage in, uh, April or March of 2019. So, it's now May of 2019. So, I've been, redo I've been doing these TRC reviews for a good year now. And a lot of people ask me, Anarka, why is it taking you a year to review 17 albums? Well, some of them were rather hard to find, and I don't mean physically, I mean digitally, and in good high quality to where I can understand them. Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of CDRs out there, a lot of bootleg tapes, but some of the quality isn't that good, and so I don't want to listen to a tape that's in bad quality that's not going to be a good review, but just finding them, acquiring them digitally, sitting them down, listening to them over and over again, contacting the bands, doing the homework, finding out the backstory, that's why a lot of these take for take a long time for me to get through, and you know, like for instance, Woods, Armstock, half of that album's in Tagalog, and so, actually, y'all watched my interview with Bobby Baling in the Woods, y'all saw my Woods, Armstock review video, that one took me a while because it's in Tagalog, and you know, I love to do my homework for album review videos. And for Philippines, where do we go from here? TRC 17, the final TRC album of the 80s. This one is different than the rest of the 16 in so many ways. First of all, this is the first time, well, kind of second time, because Deceased Never Rest in Peace is punk fused in the metal with some hardcore fusion, some crossover, some softish kind of glamish metal. The Deceased Never Rest in Peace is uh, probably the most metal album on TRC, if not the only. I mean, Dead Ends Damnation has some crossover and a thrash, you know, it goes there. And Philippine Violators, well, not on that large, but later on, you know, they go into some metal licks. But Philippines, where do we go from here? I was talking to Benji about this, Benji of GI, because you know, Benji, if you don't know this, he co-produced Philippines, where do we go from here, alongside Tommy Tanchenko. And I asked him, so how did this album come to be? Because it's so much different than the other TRC albums. It's different than the Rescue Ladder Human Barricade series, which it, it's similar to them, but it's different. It's similar in the way that it, Philippines, where do we go from here, accurately represents the Philippine underground at the time that it came out, which is the same thing that Rescue Letter Human Barricade does. As I've said before, Rescue One is an introduction to early Pinoy Punk, and the cover of Rescue One is all the TRC guys out there on the street somewhere in front of a barricade, a little fence, 
and uh, Ar I believe Arnold or someone's holding the TRC flag up high. Tommy's in the background. All the TRC guys are out there doing that. Rescue One is an introduction to the Philippine punk rock scene in 85, and it's a good representation. A lot of demo takes. Nice raw introduction. Rescue Two, fatal response, is the same, but it's a more political. It's a more political statement. Rescue Two, fatal response, is more politically charged. On the cover is a protest going on. It's a revolution. There's bombs on there with a twisted red cross logo. It's a fatal response. Pissed off at the system. Ed's 86. Third bombardment, as I've said before, is kind of like the first album, Rescue One, where it's an introduction, but this is more of a relapse of what's happening in 86. It's not so much political talk, but it's just Pinoy Underground in 1986 and what's it, what it's doing. And I love it. And also, it's really bassy and trebly, too. That was mixed heavily. And uh, the artwork to it, the three, I believe it's a picture looking through some sort of uh, barbed wire fence through my bombardment. I'm not really sure what the picture on three is supposed to be, but I think it's looking at a street or something. But Philippines, where do we go from here? Some nickname at Rescue 4, which there is a Rescue 4th four, Order, which we'll get to that later on. But Philippines, where do we go from here? It's not called Rescue, it's called, obviously what it's called, and the reason it's called that is because after Deceased Never Rest in Peace came out, Tommy and friends got around the table, according to Benji from GI, Tommy Tanchenko wanted to do something brand new. He wanted to do a new project, a new name, a new title, with featuring new bands, new blood. Because apparently around this time, metal crossover thrash was becoming the thing in the Philippines, right? That was becoming the thing. And so that's what Tommy wanted to do. He wanted to, you know, the, the punk's already been done. There's a bunch of punk rock that's already been done. Let's start from zero, start from scratch, come up with a new title, a new name, and use that to represent what's happening now. So what Benji told me is, around this time, they put a bunch of flyers out advertising new TRC release, crossover thrash, metalish. They wanted that. And so they got a bunch of demos mailed into them. And Benji tells me that him and Tommy and friends sat around the table, sorting through them, looking at them, listening to them, until ultimately they had their choice. They had their choices, which I've done a lot of research on on the uh, Philippines, where do we go from here, and I've contacted many of the bands, or at least members of the bands that were part of that release. And what does kind of sad me is, many of the bands that were part of that album were never heard from again after that album. But the, the good news is, I believe members of Valley of Death, which is my favorite band from Philippines, where do we go from here, they have went on to do new things, turned bands currently, I believe Fatal Disguise has went on, I'm not sure if UDK has Disc into X. I love the song Depression and Suicide. <laughs> you know, M A D band B E A B A N N D D. Many new faces, brand new bands that have never before been seen. That's what you get on Philippines. Where do we go from here? And unfortunately, they some of them didn't go anywhere from there. But you know what? That's what underground music is. That's what punk rock is. You know, there's so many bands out there. They exist for a short period of time. They scream it out. They let it out on that. And that's what was happening in 89. It's a really good testament. Philippines, where do we go from here? As a good staple of literally just what was happening. It does the same amount of justice. It does the same amount of, it's the same idea that Rescue had. But just with new bands, new blood, new faces, cause hell you can say the fucking same for maybe sex militants or public scandal or you know, some of the bands that you only you've only heard from them on maybe Rescue One, Two, or Three, like Zoot Suit, for instance. Other than Fatal Response and Brave New World Live, you haven't, we've never heard they haven't been featured, at least officially, on any other compilation. You know, barely anybody knows who they are. They just played back then. They fit in with the scene. Some good rockabilly Zoot Suit, and that was it. And uh. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, I, I really wish I could find a Philippines where we go from here. Because, you know, I'm not a metal person. I don't really care for much metal. It's got to sound real. It's got to sound a certain way for me to dig it. Like, I love Pagan Fire. 
Pagan Fire is probably one of the. It's if if there there's about maybe less than ten metal bands that I actually listen to. Pagan Fire's in that ten, and uh, the bands on the Philippines where they go from here, they do me justice. I can sit there and I can listen to this because it's not gen they don't sound generic. They don't sound like Metallica or Slayer or you know Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. They don't sound like they're just trying to copycat the big dogs. Which uh which uh when I first heard about Philippines where they go from here, I was told that it's it's TRC gone metal, which as I said before, no, it's this album isn't metal. It's it's not metal to to the definition of metal it's crossover into thrash metal and for that matter only a few of the bands on the only a few of the tracks on this album really constitute themselves as being of even the subgenre of metal because i think i, fit, I uh, can't name drop it off the top of my head but you only have a few really metal-esque solos you only have a few really heavy metal vibe songs on there most of what philippines where do we go from here most of what it contains is crossover into thrash metal speedy hardcore aggressive you know just really ripping it up thrash metal that's really what it is not as many solos no breakdowns it's a it's a, it's a really fast album i mean it's 40 minutes long it's not really fucking fast but you know what i'm saying it it, it starts and it obliterates all the way through and you know, it's a great aggressive reflection of the time period that, that it came from. And it did the justice. And look at the artwork. The artwork of Philippines, where do we go from here, is Death himself sitting behind the desk or the podium of the President of the Philippines. There's the, there's the podium, there's the seal, the Republic of the Philippines on there. Philippines, where do we go from here? Right above Death's head with a scythe with blood dripping off of it. And on the side of the desk is a little man hanging from a noose. And on the side of the, the spine, there's also a little man hanging from the noose. The artwork of this album is very deathifying. It's grim, it's assertive. It's really telling, it's really compelling. And literally speaking, when I first got into Twisted Red Cross, this was one of the first albums I looked at because you know, yeah, Dead End's Damnation has a black background and red damnation text on it that's pretty darkish and damnation it speaks the artwork of the album speaks for the music on the album and deceased never rest in peace it's got the zombie guys coming out of the ground there so you know you know that's some horror shit that's some dark stuff going on there but this album is a whole new level of just deathly horror just um anger fury distress philippines where do we go from here it speaks politically, it speaks socially, and it speaks musically and artistically. Like if you if if you uh, have never heard the album before, and you simply just looked at the album art, you could probably guess that it's going to be some hardcore punk shit or some crossover thrash. You could you could assume the nature of this album just by looking at the artwork. You could understand like you look at the band, you could look at the songs. If you actually find it, you could look at the lyrics and see just which direction this album is going. It speaks so well. And the artwork, like I said, the artwork just hits fucking fire and fury with the bands on the album. Tommy and Benji and them, they did an excellent job, excellent job of choosing, honestly, the best fit for this. It does make me wonder though, and I've been wondering this ever since I'm in Alfie Alvaro of Half-Life, Half-Death, because Around this time, or a little bit after, Alfie Alvera and friends of Half-Life, Half-Death, they did submit a demo tape to TRC, which could have been the original TRC-18, which we'll talk about that later. But, um, unfortunately, they came too late. But it does make me wonder how many demos there really were for this. And what bands didn't make the cut? What, do, what are their names? What do they sound like? Have they released anything? That is something that I've been wondering for the last year. The more and more and more I get into Twisted Red Cross and even RMD and all that, the more and more and more I listen to it, the more and more and more I research, talk to people and look around, I discover all these new bloods, these new bands, these new artists, these new musicians from back in the 80s and the TRC days who, they put out some tapes, but they weren't on Twisted Red Cross. They put out some albums, they played live shows with the TRC bands, 
but they weren't of that seven those 17 releases they never made the cut and it makes me wonder just how many there were you know what I'm saying that's kind of been what I've been doing for the last several months now is just trying to locate hunt down search inquire 80s 90s but even that even 2000 so how many Philippine punk bands from then till now have played shows, have self-released albums, have done the DIY underground punk rock ethic, but just their albums are either lost to time and space or they just never put anything out? That's a big question that I have that I will continue every day to search and find it out because, hey, you know what? Half-Life, Half-Death was honestly the beginning of that inquiry when I found out that the, there was a 1989 demo tape from TRC that never made it to the, to the catalog, which I know that's got nothing to do with Philippines, where do we go from here, but there's just a little side note tangent that I wanted to throw out there. To anybody watching this, if you or your band back then submitted a demo tape to be part of the Philippines, where do we go from here, or maybe Rescue 1, 3, or 2, or 4, if you, were, if you played during Twisted Red Cross, if you played during then, if you self-released an album during then, message me. I want to hear your story. You know, I've been interviewing Arnold Morales, Aldo Balanta, Dune Idiot, Alfie, Jesus Esperanto, Cena Rotten, you know, Mel Maniego, Fred, Rick. I've been interviewing all the TRC veterans. And you know, I'm, I'm making my way to the 90s and so forth. If you were a part of this scene, or the 90s or whatever, if you have a story, I want to hear it. Especially, you know, I, I want to hear it. I want your story deserves to be told. Philippines, where do we go from here? You tell me. I'm an Arca Kaza. Thank you so much for watching this review video. Sorry, I did it with the mask over my face. I just moved from Kansas to Illinois, and you're legally required to wear a mask when you go outside. And so it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I'm shouting in this. I probably look like a fucking doofus out here. Walking around a parking lot, I'm actually going to that pizza joint over there in a minute. I look, I probably look like a doofus walking around with a fucking mask shouting into my phone, but hey. I've been needing to review this album for a long period of time. But anyway, guys, thank you to Benji from GI and Idiots from giving me the information that you gave me. Thank you to Tama Tanchenko for TRC and everyone. This marks the end of TRC, of Twisted Red Cross reviews from the 80s. Yes, I will review TRC 18 Rescue Light Here for the Fourth Order at some point, but... As for now, time to close the chapter and I'm going to go in here and turn my phone off, so that's for Danya.